You are on to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abba brings you God's word with deep insight and power. God bless you. I like the way somebody said, it's a poverty is a disease. Now, I didn't say poverty is a disease. I advanced my own. And that person said poverty is a cause. I didn't stop at the cost level. I took my own to the next level. I said poverty is a sin. Poverty is a sin. Poverty is a sin. Poverty is a sin. Let me ask you a very simple question. How many of you are aware that all of you sitting in this church right now, you are dressed much better than Bill Gates dresses? Are you aware? But do you know Bill Gates controls about 80, 48 billion dollars as an individual? Bill Gates, the founder of Microsoft. 48 billion dollars. He doesn't dress as two as you're dressed in your bow tie and your suit and your fine clothes and all that. He does not dress as fine as that. But he controls as an individual about 48 billion dollars. One of the richest men the world has ever known. Poverty is a sin. You know why poverty is a sin? Because poverty contravenes the injunction and the commandment of God. Do you know to be wealthy is a commandment? To be wealthy is a commission. God wants you rich. Now, maybe you, you came into church with that your um, small thinking mentality. You better drop it now because I want to say some big, big things here. And you need to understand when I switch into the prophetic too. A few of you may be thinking, oh, we're talking about finance. Why, why are we talking about finance? I'm a student. I'm in school. My business now is to go to school and graduate. Let me tell you, in Nigeria, there are about three point something million graduates without jobs. And let me tell you something that you need to know, that getting a job does not license you to wealth. What makes you wealthy is job creation. There's a difference between a job seeker and a job giver. Job givers are the ones who make wealth. Job seekers. Mm. So when is the best time to start learning about wealth? Now, Zig Ziglar said something very interesting. I like so very much. He said about 84% of graduates don't study any well-meaning book after school. So you know why they went to school for four years? To read a course, graduate, get a certificate, and look for a job. Get employed in a company. And when they graduate and there's no job forthcoming, they get frustrated because they didn't prepare to give jobs. We're preparing for, for jobs. We're preparing to look for jobs. So all the years they had in school, four years, five years as a kid, they were only preparing to pass exams, now, after passing exams, get a good certificate if they can, then get a good job. That's a poor mentality, a poverty mentality. So they graduate, and when they don't get a job, they get into a circle of rot, get into a circle of frustration. I want to say something to you. The best thing that can happen to you for three months is not to miss one service. Because yeah, hey, yeah. It may even go for six months. I don't care. You will have money. You are not hearing what I'm saying. You will control. I, I didn't come here for six or three months to break the back of poverty. That's not what I came to do. We have had a lot of preachers who preached on breaking the yoke of poverty. I've seen preachers who preached on uh, the prosperity message. No, 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 no. I didn't come to preach to you about prosperity. I didn't come to preach to you about breaking the yoke of poverty. I came to talk to you about wealth transfer. Wealth transfer. I came to talk to you about possessing the gate of finance. Of course, that's my topic this morning. The gate of finance. Because you need to understand that when God wants to give you a city, he does not give you the things in the city. He gives you the gate of the city. Because the gate of every city is where the major transactions in that city take place. In society, there are about 12 major gates. 
you have the gates of family you have the gates of finance economy you have the gates of politics okay how many of you read government in school you read government in secondary school or you read government in the university pub, uh, public administration or political science if you read any of these courses you find out one of the things about politics and economy is that politics is a superstructure of the state economy is a substructure of the state what is substructure finance what is superstructure government but it has been said that the substructure determines the superstructure the upholder of the superstructure is a substructure that's why you see the upholder of the man is the woman that's why she's submissive that's why she's meant to be under submission submission come under the mission of the man so you are the one who holds the mission and the vision of the man that is how it is in church also the ones who sustains ministries are the women actually because their place is the place of submission that is why you see jesus couldn't have had an effective ministry until there were women in his ministry the men were analyzing issues judas was saying don't sell the sell the perfume let's use it and make some money and the other one was talking you know but the bible recorded in the book of luke how that we men like jonah Susanna, and the rest of them were rallying around the ministry of jesus and from their own post they were sponsoring the mandate of that man that's the same way it is in society society cannot run until the wife the wife is money that's why it's called the substructure the superstructure is politics government but you see okay have you ever seen any governor who won election without money answer have you seen any president who won election without money? hello so what does it tell you the superstructure is determined by the substructure that's the same way it is in ministry there are things god wants to give to us there are territories god wants to give to us they are oh my goodness there are lands god wants to give to us but until he gets us to correct our mindset about money we can't take them look at abraham he's called the father of nations he possessed territories you think he was possessing those territories by mouth no he possessed those territories by finance through money abraham was a tent maker he had money look at a man who was struggling with lot okay lot was struggling with him over taking a particular territory taking a particular field the man came out lot servants right we're dragging with lot, uh, with abraham's servant we is our own we will take it and all that and abraham came out i said why are we fighting uh, uh, what is the fight all about and the servant said they want to take our land that 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 he said is that all the matter he said oh please there's no need leave it for them have we not had more bloodshed over land dispute in current society one man got so well to a point where he dashed lands there was no dispute over the land no bloodshed even government have taken look at the cameroon nigerian bakasi peninsula issue eh over the boundary issue no nigeria owns this place cameroon said no we own this place and all that do you know how many lives it claimed do you know how many lives that were claimed that in Calago over land disputes? There's no one sitting down here who does not come from a community. Go and check your community history. There has been land dispute and it led to bloodshed. Go and check. A man got so rich to a point where he came out and said, there's no need to fight over this case. Allow them to take the land. That's how well this somebody is about to become in this season. If you're the one I'm talking to, then respond well. That's how well somebody is about to become. There's a gate called the gate of finance. The error the church has made over the years. God said, if you can take out this time and teach this church this, in the next three years, you'll be so shocked. You'll be so shocked what you see. Three years is even too much. I'm just giving you a maximum of three years a maximum of three years because by that time some of you own transport companies i'm not talking about care companies i'm talking about companies that will beat god is good motors some of you own 
franchise. Some of you would own something like Chicken Republic. The owner of Chicken Republic is just 34 years old. So why do you say it's, it's early to talk about money? Bill Gates found or discovered Microsoft Word when he was still a very young boy. And don't be deceived, he was a school dropout. The thing the world said he couldn't do, he made it possible. We have left the financial realm for the world to take over. And we have been victims of it. Do you know in this country, one man determines the importation of cement? He determines whether cement is imported or not. He determines it so he can fix the price. One man. It's a very risky thing to do. To allow the wealth that is supposed to be in the hands of the church in the hands of a man who does not know God. Who does not know Christ. You need to change your thinking. Now, I don't care whether you go to heaven or not. I don't care whether you go to hell. This season, I'm not interested in you're going to heaven or hell. If you want to go to hell, go to hell. I want you to make money. So don't think I'll come to church and I'll be preaching about going to heaven. My friend, if rapture takes place tomorrow and you are in hell, but you got wealthy, well, no problems. <laughs> That's why I'm not talking to you like, you know, I'm talking phonetics this morning. Because you need to understand money issues. Pony Satan. We left money for the devil and his children. And we're singing, you take the whole world and give me Jesus. You take the whole world. And we sing it with all kinds of spirituality. And give me Jesus. I say you gotta take the whole world. And give me Jesus. The church is all, oh hallelujah. I'm satisfied. I cannot be satisfied with that. I'm not satisfied. Hello, why did Jesus come so he could give me the whole world? So while you're giving the world to the devil, he came. So that I may have life and it is top there and have that life in abundance. So go tell people how that our priest in Hills have just changed gear. Hello? I don't care how much of tongues you know how to speak. I don't care how much of cripples you know how to raise. Without money, you're crippled. You can't go far. There are people in Pakistan languishing and perishing and going to hell. We can't go to Pakistan because of money. You think you trip Pakistan? Souls are dying in Iran and Iraq and Afghanistan and all that. And we can't go there to do missions. And you think the truth for going to do missions in the nations of the world is just the gospel. It's money that takes the gospel of Christ to the nations of the world. It's money. And until we begin to think money, until we begin to think about the gates of finance, there's little or nothing we can do. It rained this morning. Some people perhaps couldn't make it to church. Why? Because they don't have cars. You can, can you imagine that? If you didn't come to church early, you would have been at home by now, coming late to church. Why? Because you don't have cars. Oh, come on. When I'm done with you in this series, you're going to change your mindset. So you in school will buy your first cars. Nobody should lie to you because you see a population of thousands of people on your campus who don't have cars and you think that's a routine eh? there's a time for everything there's a time to graduate from school and get a car it's not true don't be deceived i told i tell you the truth i'm not interested in you're going to heaven or hell this time i'm interested in you're making money so if you want to go to hell expressway you want to sell your salvation go ahead and sell but trust me when i'm done with this i can come back to issues of heaven and hell this season i'm not talking about it hello say pastor has dead. yes What's the essence of this hell and heaven thing we're talking about when there's no money in your pocket? You want to go to heaven, but you're going through hell. <laughs> you want to go to heaven, but you're going through hell. Do you know why the devil is like in 2016? See, 2016 is a year of great things, though, but the devil entered it and he's, you know the place he went and pitched his tent? Finance. You know why? He sees that the cause of the church is going to spread like never before. The gospel will spread like never So he tries them in their spiritual life. They don't seem to be shaking. He comes to their financial life. Because if he can stop their finances, he will stop advancement of the gospel. He will stop the advancement of the gospel. The gate of finance. 
There's a gate called the gate. Okay, give me the book of Genesis chapter 24 verse 60 quickly. Let me show you something. Oh, come on. God punish the devil. There are more people going to heaven from redeemed Christian church of God. They are buying hectares of land everywhere. More people going to heaven. Okay, and the blessed Rebecca and said unto her, Thou art our sister, be thou the mother of thousands of millions, and let thy seed possess the gates of those which hate them. I'm going somewhere. I just want to give you a backup. I just want to give you a foundation to where I'm going to. He said, and let thy seed possess the gates. Where? Possess where? Possess the gates. Bill Gates is not a fool to be called Bill Gates. That name is prophetic. He's not a fool to be called Bill Gates. You know what Bill Gates is? Money Gates. What is Bill's money? Bill Gates is simply money Gates. So in the realm of finance, Bill Gates is one of the guys manning the financial world. Man in the gate of finance. Whoever controls the gate controls the city. In the olden days, everything that the city does is done at the gates. Transaction. Call it commerce. Call it politics. People win politics or lose election at the gate of cities. Places place is where they determine victory for who is going to win the election is at the gate. The place where they determine the victory over finance at the gate. Buying and selling took place at the gate. Everything situated at the gate. Let me ask a very simple question. Why is that whenever you're traveling to a major city like Lagos, for instance, when you get into a major territory, the first thing you see is a toll gate. You're not connected. Some of you don't understand because you've not traveled. You're just in the back of Licky. Guess what? You enter Lagos. The moment you're entering VI, Lekki, you'll find a very powerful toll gate. That's where transaction takes place. Your car cannot enter the city until your money leaves your car. Until your money registers at that toll gate. Toll, toll, toll means money. Toll is money. Fee. Toll gates. And at that gate, you know the kind of income that is generated for the city. So you pay that toll to get to the city. Nobody allows you to the city. The last time I drove to Lagos, I don't know how many times I paid on that gate. 150 is the fare, is the toll. For going in and coming out, you pay 150. So the men who know how to man the gates of finance are the ones who own the cities. That's one of the things the church has been very poor at doing. And I found out that one of the things the devil would do in the last day church is to keep them preaching all kinds of messages, but they would hide the issue of money from them. The devil would do everything possible to ensure he pollutes the mind of believers and get them to think that money is carnality. Money is not Christianity. He will get them to believe that money is not part of Christianity. And that is what he did to the church many years ago. And before we realized it, it was too late. And the world took the gates of media. It took the world at the gates of sports. It took the gates of entertainment. Took the gates. And the church was busy singing, take the whole world and give me Jesus. We left the media world for the devil to man. Of course, see the ripple effect in the lives of our kids today. We gave them the gate of finance. They took it. We left it for Coca-Cola. You know how much Coca-Cola is worth? Coca-Cola is one company that will never shut down, no matter how much you prophesy. You know how Coca-Cola started? Coca-Cola started when a man discovered a particular cola nut. The word Coca-Cola, that word cola, is actually a cola, cola nut. It was from cola nuts that Coca-Cola was produced. Cola nuts. 
found one pigment and uh, manufactured something, started serving it in little, little cups. First, the intention was to serve it for the U.S. Army who were going to, for war and all that. From serving it for the, to the U.S. Army, the guy caught a bigger vision and said, one day, I will take Coca-Cola to every doorstep in the world. Every household would know about Coke. And from just, you know, people didn't believe in it that much. And today, Coke is a household name. It's a name to be reckoned with. A force. A company to be reckoned with all over the world. There are countries you go to, Coca-Cola is more popular than Jesus Christ. Coca-Cola is more popular than the Bible. You are part of Asia, you go to now, tell them, do you know what the Bible is? They'll be asking you, please, which textbook is that? Who wrote it? Who is the author? They think the Bible is just one textbook written by someone. They don't know what the Bible is, but everybody knows what Coke is. Somebody took it. We can't be talking about this and you're sleeping in church. The devil doesn't want you to hear this then. He has entered you. He wants you to be poor. Let's tell ourselves the truth. This Christianity without result is an insult. Don't pretend you don't want it. Don't pretend you don't want it. Christianity will be sweeter with money. Some of you, some brethren are almost backsliding. Why? Because of money. I heard something Matthias Shimolowo did. He said his father used to be the poorest man in the village from Oshun State. Poorest of all poorest. People call them poor. Even poor people call them poor. My father never went to school. His grandfather never went to school. His great-grandfather never went to school. His father was a, an army man. Then um, the rest of the uncles were all farmers. Peasant farmers. And he said he was the first person who broke the yoke of poverty in his community. And one time he was flying from London to Nigeria on the speaking engagement and he met a senator in the plane who happens to be from his place. And the guy came to him and knelt down and said, thank you very much for putting the name of our community on the world map, on the map of the world. And he said, how? He said, because I heard your beauty in the university in Oshun State. A world-class university. The guy came to Oshun one time and gathered about 3,000 and something women, widows, old people, helpless people, and fed them for one week. Giving them food, empower them with money, empower them with clothes, empower them with food, empower them with all kinds of substance. Change the lifestyle of people. 3,000 souls. We're all transformed because of what? Money. 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 He said, what is amazing is that over 80% of the people who gathered there were Muslims. 80% of the people who gathered, they were all Muslims. So guess what happened? When they came, before they started doing the sharing and the feeding and the eating and all that, he brought one of his pastors who can speak the dialects very well. And the pastor preached so powerfully. They played some very powerful Christian song in the Yoruba dialect. He said, but you know what was interesting? The people couldn't help but give their life to Jesus. Because the gospel on the wings of money makes people give their life to Christ easily. It makes it easy. It makes it easy. When the gospel travels on money, you don't waste your time too much in crusades. You don't waste your time too much in church service. Well, what are you talking about, my friend? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are changing the tide. There's a shift. I call it wealth shift. Money transfer. Didn't the Bible talk about it? Why have we hidden our eyes? Why, are we, why, why have we hidden those pages from our eyes? All we keep seeing is heaven. When with this peasantry life, you leave, stop. This life of hands to mouth. Somebody has got to be angry in his spirit. Somebody has got to yearn for a change of levels. Somebody has got to start thinking big. Give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. Let me show you something in that scripture. Very important. Quickly. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. After three months of staying on money, you become money. You become a money making machine. See what it says. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. See you. See how to remember God. 
For it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. So in remembering God, don't just remember him because you're going to heaven. Hey, yeah, yeah. Don't just remember him because you're going to eternity. He said, you shall remember the Lord thy God. So in thinking about God, what do you think about? He giveth the power to make wealth. When you think about God, why do you just think about heaven? Some of us have become so heavily conscious that we become so earthly useless. Heavily conscious and earthly useless. Heavily relevant and earthly relevant. He told you that uh, what matters is your salvation. What matters is you, uh, life after death. I say yes, it matters. But money also matters to me. I would rather go to heaven a rich man than go there a poor man. Lazarus can tell you the story better. Died a poor man. He went to Abraham's bosom. You know what he's going through there? You know why they sent him to Abraham? Go and do IT. Abraham was a wealthy man. So go and learn it. So when next you repeat life, you become a wealthy man. That's why he went to Abraham's bosom. <laughs> Somebody's not hearing what I'm saying. That's why he went there. So that next time he comes back on earth, he will become the real son and hell of Abraham's wealth. Are you saying Abraham's blessings are mine? Do you know God told Abraham, I will bless you to a point where you become a blessing to nations. Oh my goodness. He didn't say you'll just be blessed. He said you'll be a blessing. That means you'll become a source of blessing. Anyone who comes to you will be blessed because of you. He said you shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Yeah, la la kaya the chorus. He didn't say in the son Ishmael all the nations will be blessed. He said in you, in you Abraham. He didn't say all men, all nations. All nations, and I'm a seed of Abraham. I'm not just a seed of Abraham, I'm a seed of the new covenant in Christ. And you say I'm gonna be poor. God punish the devil. You know, there are people. Do you, do you know how embarrassing it is that school fees is your challenge? How strength is your challenge? Is a slap on the face of divinity to our for the basic necessities of life. What is car? Car is just a basic necessity. Can you trek from here to Lagos? You can't aff afford a flight ticket, a visa to the US just to have a vacation and enjoy with your wife and family. Your wife is seeing hellfire at home because she got married to a bro whose Bible is so big and the covers are torn and he's using a newspaper to cover them. Bro in Christ. He, she can't have a sweet life. Then who did they build a five stars hotel for? You think it's for the children of the dark world? Who is New York built for? Bangkok. All the shopping places in the world. Who is ShopRite built for? Where will you change that mentality? The first thing about possessing the gates of your enemy is you need to understand that God wants you to be wealthy. That's the first step in it. You can write it down. The first thing is that you need to understand God wants you to be wealthy. Get a kingdom mentality about wealth. That's what it means. God wants you wealthy, my friend. And he doesn't want you wealthy at a particular age. He wants you wealthy at a particular stage. He doesn't want you wealthy at a particular age. Listen, if a five years old boy catches this mentality, he becomes wealthy. That why Bill Gates caught it at the age of 11 and he became it. Just to start thinking wealthy now. Don't wait until you get to your father's age. It's now it starts. That's why Mark Zuckerberg taught it. And it happened for him. One thing about wealth is as a respect of nobody. It's a respect of, it's not a respect of age. It's not a respect of your classroom. It's not a respect of your colors. It's not a respect of your tribe. Anybody can become it. So far as you've got a mentality about it, change that problem. Change that just enough mindset. You need the kingdom mentality about wealth. How do kingdom people think about wealth? Do you imagine what God will be thinking? You think God thinks like? You know who your father is? You know who God is? The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and what the fullness thereof you keep seeing heaven, you don't see the earth. If God wanted you to be in heaven by now, you would have been long dead. 
The moment you gave your life to Jesus, you should have gone home to be with the Father. So why did he leave you on earth? He said, occupy till I come. What is occupied? That's what you call certificate of occupancy. Certificate of occupancy is what licenses you for ownership of a land. The government gives it to you when you buy a land. So God gave you the certificate of occupancy of the earth. And you're telling me it should be in the hands of... Dangote. See, Ishmael shouldn't be as potent as the seed of Abraham. It's not possible. For the continuation of this message, please play the next track.